Hello everyone and welcome to the English Teacher's Guide to the Edexcel GCSE English Literature page and today we're looking at section 2 of the response to poetry which is how to create an A star response to the comparison question. Okay now very briefly here's the structure of the exam paper just in case you've forgotten. The exam itself is 25% of your total literature grade, it's 1 hour and 45 minutes, two sections. In our previous video, section A, we looked at how to answer the unseen poem and I recommend you look back at that if you've not seen that already. And today's video will focus on section B, which is now that the exam has changed slightly, you have one comparison essay based on one named poem. There are no other choices. Previous years, you had a choice of a couple of questions. This year, it's one question with one poem which is named and you can obviously then compare that with a poem that you think is best suited. Now, two questions for you to see if you've been doing your revision. Task 1. What do you need to do within the question in order to achieve 30 out of 30? So, what do you need to do to make sure you get the marks in the mark scheme? And task 2. What's the method you need to use in order to accomplish perfect marks? And that includes planning as well as answering. Pause this very briefly, write down what you think the answer is, and then press, press play to resume when you are ready. Okay, so here's the mark scheme very quickly. Now, for the comparison question, it's changed. It's 15 marks for AO2, 15 marks for AO3. But I thought I'd bring you up the last year's mark scheme. And band 5, let's imagine instead of that being 17 to 20, it's now up to 15 because the comments are still going to be the same. You need to make sure your ideas are perceptive, which basically means you're not saying this poem, it's cold because it's snowing. That's too obvious. You need to talk about the idea that the world around them maybe seems to be a cold and rather isolating place for them. That's perceptive. That's basically clever. Clever ideas. Explain how the language structure and form presents these ideas. We're going to come to that in a second. Make sure you are integrating your quotations. Make sure it's not just I know it's because it says this. Use only what you need when you quote. Make sure your answers are as well. You can see you need to make sure you write your answer correctly to get the spelling, punctuation and grammar marks. Now, let's go back very quickly. Form, structure, language. Well, what can you include? Because you need to include all three of those things to get perfect marks. Well, here is a list of things you might want to include. So, for instance, language is fairly obvious. You've been doing that since you were, well, in primary school. But there's some phrases there that you can focus on. Structure. Slightly more complex, so structure can include things like the rhyme scheme, it can include things like the size of the stanzas. So in, in my last video we looked at the idea of the bat as being a mother, and there were two characters in there but it was one stanza, so we said that could suggest the closeness of the two of them. Now that's a perceptive idea, isn't it? Form. What type of poem is it? Is it a sonnet? Is it a ballad? You don't necessarily need to know that in too much detail at GCSE, but if it's there, and you can understand it, you can use it, and explain why that's important. Also, for form, you can look at who the speaker is, you can look at the setting. All these things can be relevant for you for your marks. Now, comparisons. AO3, let's look at how to get 15 out of 15. Discriminating comparisons which show insight. So again, it's not just they are both about the weather. It needs to be something more than that. It could be, for instance, they both use the weather to reflect their current situation. That's more discriminating. Discriminating could also be something a bit more insightful. So it could be you focusing on the use of punctuation, for instance, and how one uses it this way, one uses it that way. Perceptive evaluation, again, is that idea of you know, intelligent points rather than really basic ones. And then obviously you need to make sure you've got examples to prove you're correct, so evidence. So it shouldn't be that difficult. You just have to make sure that you've got a balance between being able to analyze the poems and being able to compare the poems. But how do we do that? Well, planning. Now you've got a choice here. So in total, we have about one hour. So five to ten minutes to plan, 40 minutes to write, and that gives you about five or so minutes to proofread. And that's really important to proofread because if you don't check your work, you might have made a massive mistake in your piece or you might have missed something out and that could be a difference between you getting A star and a lower grade. You've got a choice of your planning now. You can either plan the name poem in the same way you would have planned the unseen poem. And now again, this should be easy for you because actually you've read through all these poems during your time in school and during your revision. So almost treat the poem, the named one, on its own. Once you've analyzed it, you've made your kind of three to five points, then pick the poem that you feel be best to compare with. And it's often 
far easier to compare it with a poem which says different things about the same idea. Once you've done that, obviously, for each point that you've made for the first poem, does poem number two do it in a similar or a different way? What you probably will need to do is look back at your three to five ideas. You might have written six, seven, eight, and then pick the ones that you feel you can best use. Once you've picked the points you're going to make, then you go back and do the deeper analysis. Don't do the deeper analysis of poem number one first and then compare, because how do you know what points you're going to use? Look at the points, create the points, pick the poem you're going to use, do the points match up? Can you say comparison points about the three to five ideas? Then go back to the poems themselves, do the further analysis that you need. If you want to look at how to plan how it actually look on the poems, I'm not going to show you in this video. Look back on my unseen video so you can see exactly what the plan should look like. What's important to notice is you need to say in your notes whether they show similarity or difference. And again, if you're going to get perfect marks, it's not just this is similar, this is different. It's going to be they no, they use they both do this, but one does it this way, one does it that way. That's being discriminating. That's to get top marks. Or the other planning method you could use is that you immediately identify the poem you would use to compare. So straight away, go right. This is the poem I'm going to use to compare. Make points of comparison straight away, and then go back. So rather than focusing on breaking down the answer, poem one, pick your second poem, poem number two, and then do your notes. This one straight away, and it's whatever works best for you, basically. So please feel free to pause this, take down some ideas. Let's look at how we answer this, shall we? So answering. In introduction, briefly explain the way the poem number one presents the idea that you've been asked to write about. Or, what's better, is to start with the phrase both. Both poems refer to conflict. Both poems refer to whatever the theme is you're being asked to. What you then do is you say poem number one deals with it in this way. However, or similarly, poem number two deals with it in this way or in a similar way. And again, this is where part of your revision, you're going to need to come up with a list of words and phrases which show similarities and differences. So for the this question, very important you revise a list of words and phrases that can show similarities or differences rather than you saying the same thing over and over again. Because if you sound intelligent, the mark is going to believe you're intelligent and is more likely to give you perfect marks. Now, the main body, you're essentially doing this method three to five times. I say three to five because you might, in the time, come up with five great ideas and you're able to write five ideas perfectly. Maybe write four, maybe write three. It's all about whether or not you can do it in the time. So, begin with a point that compares both texts this might be a theme or a technique. So both poems explore whatever. Then, analyze poem number one. So looking at the form, structure, and language, because remember, you need to get those 15 marks. Then use a linking phrase to show you're about to look at poem number two. This is similar or different to. Then, within that same paragraph, begin to analyze poem number two, the one that you've picked. But every time you analyze, is that similar or different to poem number one? Why? And that's obviously where you're doing your main part, your comparison. There is no need for a conclusion, but I often quite like to put a conclusion in just to evaluate, just to make sure that I'm thoroughly comparing. Again, feel free to pause this and then let's move on. So this is a question I want us to explore. Compare how writers explore ideas of conflict in exposure, which is the name poem, and a poem of your choice. Okay, so again, I'm not going to show you the planning method for this question today, but you can look at how to plan on my unseen poem. I just simply want to show you one of the answers today. And this is what it should look like. So, I've highlighted the strict comparisons in red, but not for the introduction, because we've just talked about that. So, both Owen and Carson highlight the very negative aspects of conflict. Straight away comparing, straight away I'm picking up marks for AO3. Owen explores how a soldier on the front feels the entire world has become a harsh and dangerous place and that death is his only way out. Carson's poem also, the comparison, highlights the harsh nature of conflict. But rather than being on the front line, Carson's work explores the inescapability of conflict at home. So they are that's similar but different. And that's being discriminating. Notice that my introduction basically says to the marker, look, I know exactly what I'm talking about. I have answered the question for you. They both do this. One does it this way, the other does it that way, in a similar but different way. 
straight away the market's going to sit there thinking this person knows what they are doing so here's my point firstly both poems depict conflict as cruel so i've looked at the idea of cruelty in conflict and a comparison phrase within belfast confetti the speaker describes the explosion of nuts bolts nails and car keys notice the quotations are integrated so i'm using only what i need which highlights the cruelty of conflict as the weapons used to murder actually contain everyday objects that are meant to help us. The use of nuts and bolts, so language analysis, strengthens this cruelty as these objects are actually used to create things rather than destroy. Owen's poem also highlights this cruelty. So there's my linking phrase. So it's going to be similar. Within the first line of the poem, Owen describes the wind that knives us. This suggests that even the cruel world the speaker is in feels like it's attacking the soldier, not just other people. Knives also demonstrates that the conflict represented by the cruel weather here, so a little bit of form there, has penetrated the speaker, suggesting that the very soul of the soldier has been attacked. Carlson, Carson also creates this immediate sense of cruelty, it's a link, through its use of the word suddenly, which shows that the attack was unexpected and quick suggesting that death can occur at any point. In contrast, so we're linking it again, Owen's work uses the phrase nothing happens, which creates an opposing cruelty, so a different type of cruelty. As rather than the cruelty of conflict occurring, in his work it fails to appear at times, suggesting that the anticipation of violence, not just violence itself, creates a tone of hopelessness. So all of that analysis is exploring how the poem's depict conflict as being cruel but notice I've looked at form I've looked at language there and all the way through this is similar but different this is you know we've got comparisons all the way through that piece so we just repeat that structure again furthermore both poems suggest cruel conflict leaves us feeling vulnerable there's that clear point then we're looking at structure immediately Carson's free verse structure highlights a lack of organization and confusion reinforcing the idea that an attack can be sudden leaving the speaker feeling uncertain. So that lack of structure, that free verse structure here, creates a sense that anything can happen. In contrast, Owen's work uses a stricter ABBA rhyme scheme within the work. However, so here's a similarity but difference. However, this is only through the use of half rhymes such as silent and salient, which suggests the speaker believes that the structure of the army is falling apart, creating an individual who feels less vulnerable than Carlson's speaker, but is clearly feeling vulnerable. So similar, but different. Owen develops his vulnerability through the use of the title Exposure, so form, which suggests that Owen and the soldiers he refers to feel unprotected from the bullets and the weather. So vulnerable, exposure, vulnerable, clear. Carlson's title also creates a sense of vulnerability, as we discover that for the people of Belfast, there are no celebrations, only violence. Final point, so we've done three for this example. Finally, both Carlson and Owen create the idea that conflict is unavoidable. So all my analysis now, all my comparison is going to compare how they create the idea that conflict is unavoidable. Carlson's poem creates the image of an inescapable labyrinth, so integrated quotation, so I only use what I need. It saves me time and makes me look smarter, it's win-win. Passing through the streets that constantly refer, that constantly reference wars such as the Crimea, showing that conflict is an ingrained part of the cultural psyche of Northern Ireland. Furthermore, Carson's use of the simple sentence dead end again showed that the speaker has not only been stopped in their attempt to escape the violence this time, but could also suggest, through the use of again, that the speaker, and possibly the whole country, has been unable to escape the conflict before. So again, says you can't escape it. In addition, the use of the full stop, so punctuation, structure now again, symbolizes the sense of being trapped within the conflict there's no escape full stop shows the end of a sentence shows there's no way out carlson also makes the conflict unavoidable for the reader through the rhetorical question why can't i escape which forces the reader to engage in the conflict making it unavoidable for us also now obviously both those ideas are very perceptive they're going to be top bound ideas but really simple really simple things you could do in your own work now here's my link Rather than conflict being just unavoidable, it seems Owen feels that nothing is being done to end it. Owen also uses structure to put forward his idea, but Owen uses repetition through the phrase, nothing happens. 
to not only highlight the incessant nature of war, incessant meaning it keeps going, similar to Carlson's use of the phrase again, so now you see more perceptive comparison, but by using this on the final line of more than one stanza, Owen puts forth the message that this conflict could be ended, um, but this is not present in Carlson's work, making it seem as if the poet feels conflict in Ireland cannot be ended. So there's my three points. You don't have to have a conclusion. This is what your conclusion could look like. Overall, both poets clearly highlight conflict to be a negative experience, so we're now evaluating what they're saying about conflict. Whilst Carlson's work attempts to demonstrate what conflict is like for a civilian trapped within an internal conflict and the seeming difficulty of escaping this world, Owen's poem tells the reader of the torture of conflict and how it seems that, like Carlson's poem, the world is a threatening place which will slowly harm you. Okay, and that's it. Here's a link to look at the past questions for you, which I'll put onto the description page underneath. But make sure you revise that structure. Choose which planning method works best for you. Personally, I find it easier to maybe pick the poem that you know you're going to compare it with, but then do the work for poem number one. And as you're doing the work for poem number one, in terms of thinking about your points, think to yourself, can I use those in my comparison? Pick your three to five ideas then go back to the poems. Make sure you use that structure, give yourself time to proofread. Okay guys, thank you very much and keep working hard, well done.